The opinions expressed on the following show are strictly those of the hosts and participants and do not reflect the views of Taunton Community Access and Media, its management or directors. Welcome to FYI. My name is Mary Ellen. And I'm Joe. <laughs> Wait, let me say my last name okay, here. Because people make fun of it all the time, so I want you to say it right. So yo. Mary Ellen Yo. This is Yo. I am Mary Ellen Yo. Okay. And I'm John McCall. Welcome to our program. Thank you for tuning in. So what's new with you? Oh, I had a great time this weekend, John. I went away to New Hampshire. I love New Hampshire. Okay. I went tubing. I tubin. never did went tubing before. Up on a I, chairlift. Yeah. It was a one one woman tube. But right. at first it was scary. The first rundown, you have brakes on it and stuff. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've ever done it, but I, I, I suggest you try it because it's just exhilarating. It's nice to be outside and yeah. you can steer it and slow it down and you get sprayed with all the snow. And it's a lot it was, of fun. It's pretty, and it's pretty. Mm -hmm. And we did the ice castles. That was kind of nice, fantastic. Nice, nice. Yeah, so did a great weekend. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yes, four of us went mm -hmm. out my five-year-old. I loved it. I actually I like experienced it. the same thing, too. You actually, it was back in it was in, in Haverhill. Uh, they call it Ward Hill, and the location was beautiful. And we had five or six people that were actually on the tube. That would be a big tube. It was huge. It was, huge. it was huge. It was huge. We we went down. You know, of course, sometimes you fell off from now and then, but it was great. We went right down the hill. Then the interesting thing was, Muriel, they hooked us up and dragged us back up to the top of the hill again. That's the best thing. You don't have to walk up. How I we know. take a chairlift up? Oh, you had to take a chairlift. Yeah. Okay. But do they have a cushion in the middle or something to mm -hmm. hold you in there? You, right. so you don't. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, job. it was a lot of fun. I loved it. I want to try it again. So you liked the ice castles? I did. I loved it. It was nice. Tell me a little bit about pretty. that. It was what they do is um, you go in and um, you walk around. And they have tunnels, and they have slides for the kids. Mm -hmm. And when they're making the ice, they actually freeze LED lights inside the ice view. So at night, oh my God, it's fantastic when you see it. It's just nice, vibrant colors, blues and purples and reds. That sounds beautiful. Lions and tigers and bears. No, I'm just kidding. But it was <laughs> really nice. It was cold. It was very cold. Mm -hmm. But we just dressed appropriately and had a lot of fun, and it was beautiful. It's just calm. Well, believe it or not, you just come to my house. I have icicles everywhere. So that's yeah, my ice castle. All right, all right, all right, all right. But what's up with our show tonight, well, viewers? I have, we have a very interesting show. Actually, I, I went to a... Uh, kind of ghoulish show tonight. A ghoulish? Ooh, ghoulish, yeah. A little like, ghoulish show. Yeah. I, I went to a book signing a few weeks ago, and I met this gentleman named Ken Spears, and he was telling me about his book, and I'm, I said, you're going to come up to our program and talk about your book. And if you remember, a few years ago, we met another author, uh, Tim Souza, yes, and he was talking about his poems and what inspired him to uh, write. So I said, you know, how about we get both of them on because their books are almost similar but a different twist to them. Same genre. Yes. But different storylines yeah. and characters. So let's yeah. meet them, yeah. shall we? Yeah, I will. I'd like to introduce uh, Ken Spears. Welcome to our program. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming me. on. Okay, nice, nice to see you. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Thank you. And Tim Souza. Tim, nice to welcome back. Thanks. Nice Thanks. to yeah, see you again. again. Thank too. you. Good to be back. So let's 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 find out how you guys got to be writers. Is it something you always wanted to do? You must have been very good. Let's start with you, Tim. And they're Tontonians. We can't forget about Tontonians. that. Tontonians. Yeah. So you must have been very good in English. Were you a straight A student? Horrible all the way? in English. Horrible. I you was horrible, horrible in English. English. Well, really? Well, and now yeah. you're publishing. Wow. How does that work? Imagine that. Now I'm a published author. Like two poetry journals, and I got novels on the way. Yeah. That's wonderful news. Isn't Absolutely. that encouraging, mm -hmm. viewers? Mm -hmm. Well, it's you find something you love. You might not like it at the time. Later on, you know, people change. So I liked writing. I liked putting my thought, you know, whatever inspired me to write. And I'd, uh, next thing you know, editing, learn a little bit of my own editing. And when you like something, you learn more of it and you get better at it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Did, you, did you have a teacher that inspired you to write at all? Actually, yeah. I had a, at Northeastern. It wasn't a teacher, it was actually a classmate. Her name was Akira. She was a good student and she loved my imagination. She used to say, if it took my imagination, her writing, we could probably write a good book. And, uh, well, you know, she ended up moving back to Japan and mm -hmm. I thought, wrote a hey, good book. Why not? Yeah, why you not just do it myself? So that was around the time I posted a, a poem called 
Among the Plains. I entered a poetry contest, and that actually took first place in that one. That was oh, wow. Your first time you went to the poetry, yeah. you won first place? Yeah, yeah. It was a poetry contest. Oh, a talented awesome. one, huh? Awesome. I don't do poetry contests now. <laughs> I don't believe in them. I don't think mm -hmm. poems should be judged. They come from a different... Mm -hmm. Plains. That's a whole other show, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's all right. Kenny, how about yourself? What inspired you to write a book? And well, if you could tell a bit about your background, too. Absolutely. Uh, I started writing when I was young, like, uh, like Tim did. We uh, drew our own comic books, wrote the stories, acted them out, played superhero. You played superhero? Yeah. Yeah. Who's your superhero? superhero? I like Spider-Man myself, but okay. uh, uh, we used to make up our own and uh, draw them and, and, and write the stories. And then later on in school, I uh, was the editor of the creative writing class, uh, journals and magazine, and we did a lot of creative writing in, in public school and then in college. And I always said, you know, someday I'm gonna write a book, and then someday actually came. So uh, then I wrote the book and quickly followed it with a second book, and then it just kept coming. So I tapped into something that I, that I had and, and then produced, uh, I have two books out now, and I have a few others. Absolutely, I have a few others in line to come out shortly. Uh, the first one I put out was called Carved in Stone, uh, and it actually kicked off a series, uh, and it was followed up uh, a year later by In Hollow Trees. So this one came out in uh, the fall of 2013, and this one just came out this past fall. Oh, it's um, kind of dark or scary or ominous. Or... It's uh, a little bit. A little bit. Uh, Can you tell us a little absolutely. bit. Absolutely. So I, I write about what I, I know. Uh, geographically, it takes place here in southeastern Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, while giving away too much of the story, there are uh, some kids who are the main characters who are basically a collage of the kids I grew up with. They're very uh, similar to the people that I know. And they have to, uh, well, let me say it just takes place about 30, 35 years ago. So they have to actually work for their information instead of using Google or the Internet. So they have to go to the library and the historical society and dig up some clues from the past, deal with the past to solve a problem that they have now. So uh, they're, they're actually battling some demons, literally. And, uh, and they have to uh, find the solution to save the town. Interesting. How about yourself, Tim? I like it. You like, you like it? Book, yeah. Well, let's talk about your book now and see if Ken will say My like book it. is just like, just like Ken's. This is the first of a three-book series, a trilogy, this is a titled big one. The Refuge. And the first book, as you can tell by the cover, takes place in Cape Cod, the, actually in Falmouth, Falmouth to be exact. Second book takes place in Boston, and the third closes out here in Taunton. So just like, just like Ken, we keep it local. You know? mm -hmm. This is a post-apocalyptic setting where there are zombies and other similar creatures that we as human beings mm -hmm. tend to put our brains together and fight off. The two main characters are U.S. Marines, and I put myself in their mindset, being a Marine myself at one point, and I thought to myself, okay, how would I do this if I was in this situation? I would want to get people to be of somehow like-minded training-wise, calm them down, teach them a few things, and now let's secure a... Uh, community somewhere, the refuge, that becomes refuge. So is the refuge for the Marines, or is it, what, I don't... Well, the main character is a Marine, and where it takes place, there's, uh, uh, there's a military base not too far away where they pretty much locate to meet up at and uh, get in with the town, but the refuge itself, I don't want to give away. Oh, the yeah. buy the book. Yeah, like but that... Book. But you're right. I mean, it's this. There is a military base down that way, and uh, you will have to read the book. I'll have to read the book. There you go. You <laughs> so you book. guys have similar genres because it's kind of like macabre, mm, eerie, horror, horror yeah, fit. spectral, right? So that's good. Did you guys know each other prior to the show? No, actually, no. we didn't. No. So you have a lot in common. And you're both from Taunton, which is yeah. interesting. Yeah. Both from Taunton. So what inspires you? Where do you get? Like, how did you ever come up with like? Writing about this or writing about, you said, what was your book, Demons and Yes, or the, something? Uh, Supernatural Thriller. So, Supernatural Thriller. Well, I'm a big Stephen King fan, and really, who isn't? Um, and on top of that, uh, a lot of people say I write like Dean Koontz, and there are other writers out there. Peter Straub, we were talking about earlier, uh, who's an excellent writer. So uh, I write what I, I, I know what I, and what I like. Um, I wrote this book kind of for myself, you know, and this isn't any heavy, heavy lifting. There's no big words. Uh, it's pretty much so the, you know, the happy meal of, of the novel world. It's, uh, well, that's a good way of putting it. So yeah. it's easy reading. Easy reading, like... but it's very quickly paced and very consumable and enjoyable. Uh, maybe not the best for you, but 
Mm -hmm. Just there to have a good Entertaining. time. Entertaining. Right. Entertaining. You know, something that I could read on a plane flight and enjoy. Mm -hmm. cool. Now, now your, te your wife's a teacher, too. Yes, she is. Right. Yes. Okay. So we both read. Um, we have books, of, thousands of books in the house. Literally, we have a library in our house. Oh, lucky. Uh, yeah, I read a lot. I probably read a couple books a week. Oh, my gosh. Do yeah. you work full time? Or I it? do. I do have a job. <laughs> that uh, supplements my income uh, on top of this, and hopefully someday this will be my, only, my only position. But uh, yeah, I do it because I love it. Um, you know, it's not so much the income, it's because I actually really enjoy doing is it. Is this your passion? It this is. is like, some so, people paint, some people play guitar, I like to do this. So oh, would, I'm sorry, go ahead. When do you guys write? If you, you have a full-time job too. To, so what, do you get up early in the morning and write? Do you write at the same hour every day? Do you have the same habits, similar habits? I'll write. Anytime I feel like right, anytime I get the inspiration, and in, it's like you asked earlier, where do we get the inspiration from? Inspiration comes from everywhere and anywhere. The good, the bad, the ugly, everything in between. Anything Maybe comes we'll from get, us. we'll mm -hmm. inspire so. him. I'll be the good, you'll be the bad, and the ugly. No. <laughs> wow, you know. Sheesh. <laughs> She's causing problems. Wait till you see if it was what we're going to have ugly later. Okay, but that's okay. Imagine if she didn't like it. Instead but of uh, Mary Ellen, it was scary Ellen. Scary Ellen. Here we go. But so just driving down the street, you could see like some person could be a carrot. Is that what you're talking about? Like so if I'm, let's say I'm driving to work and I'm thinking, wow, Route 138 Taunton, if it was saturated with zombies, how would I get out of this? How would you the people like in the that? Eamon like, Brothers building get out of this? Right? Like, yeah, I mean, it's just, okay. it, you know, I... I the time. Yeah. <laughs> how, about yourself, how about yourself, Ken? What, what, uh, that's funny. Inspiration strikes anywhere. So Is it more I, I, in the morning, evening, I or when you're driving? I do write mostly in the morning, but I, I've written any time like, like Tim does. But I try and uh, do it every morning, and I try and do no less than a page a day. Some days uh, I'll bang out four, five, ten pages. Yeah. And some days I'll force myself to the one, because depending on what's going on. Uh, but I find inspiration everywhere I am. I carry a pen with me. and Not anymore, because yeah, I, I usurped it. And, and, and a piece of paper, and, and if an idea strikes me wherever I may be, that might be an interesting name, uh, or a street uh, name, or, or, or a poem will come to mind, or a song, and I'll, oh, and it inspires, or it makes me think of something, and I'll just write it down now, to do you later. Mostly before you start writing, do you just sit there and try to clear your mind and about everything around you, or you just... Something comes up like, oh wow! I, didn't I do that. If, if I'm sitting at the keyboard, I already have something in mind. Something's already presented itself, mm -hmm. and I'm just trying to flesh it out. Same thing with you, Tim. Yeah, pretty much. It's exactly how we said. And when, it, one minute you're writing, you're, you're writing just a paragraph. And we start the paragraph off. That paragraph turns to ten pages. Turns to wow. three pages. I mean, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything well, can inspire yeah. us. I know. I'm. I'm surprised. So you guys get up in the morning and just kind of like stop Before writing. Before we start just, our day, yeah. With me, it's the evening it, time. You write it. Oh, so there's yeah. a little difference. Evening yeah, so time. It's. It's. That's you're when more I'm creative at night. At night. You're a morning person. Is this the way it goes? Yeah. Unless I'm near the end of the story and I just really want to. It's really going. I'm. I'm just about there. I'll. I'll work it uh, around the clock to get it done. Look at you, just yeah, to get all like excited. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Always, I've always heard that sugar. Sugar kind of. Oh, sugar gets you going. Sugar rush. So God gave us the gift of Oreo cookies, oh, right? So I'll have a few <laughs> Oreo cookies right Ken before I go. That's the main character's favorite cookie. Oh, oh, so are you oh, you guys are like connected. It's like how about that <laughs> Oreo are you cookies? Serious? Yeah. Wow. I'm serious. That's In this funny, book, huh? that's what he the, the the treat that his mother always gives him is Oreo cookies. Anyone who's on my Facebook page will tell you I'm an Oreo cookie fan. <laughs> you know. So how are your families? Like, if you go hibernate into a cave or whatever, you like. Are you married, Tim? No. No. So, but my son will steal my computer from me. So oh, thank awesome. God, along with my Oreo cookies, I've got a notepad and a pen. Oh, so so when he's done with the cartoons on Netflix, now I can go ahead and just, you know. And so he's supportive. He knows Daddy's going to Oh, party. yeah. I told him I was going to be here today. I was like, good, buddy. You want to come with me? His name's Logan, my son mm -hmm. Logan. Great. Oh, that's good little boy. He's, mm -hmm. I'm like, buddy, you want to come to, uh, you know, want to come to the studio with me? Sure. I get to be on TV, too. I said, why not? I gotta warn you though, there's gonna be zombies there. Uh, oh, never mind. Mind. Oh, okay. right. <laughs> and, and Ken, what about your family? You said you were married. And yes. You have, are uh, they supportive? Yeah. Oh, extremely. Um, my wife reads a lot. She likes what I've been doing. She appreciates all of my hobbies, my crazy hobbies. Uh, but uh, this is something that's been a passion of mine for quite a while. And, um, you know, my, my parents, my in laws, they've actually all read my stuff and, and uh, the. the Results have been positive. A lot of feedback. How yeah. about your daughter, Samantha? She's six years old, so this is a little ahead of her. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
someday soon she'll be able to read it uh, without mm -hmm. scaring her too much and not able to sleep at night. Yeah, you know, I was curious about, since you both have the same kind of mindset, is it possible that two authors can get together and publish a book together? Collaborate. And collaborate. Absolutely. Because it seems like you both have that demon, zombie, it's the evil, yes. kind of... sick, disturbing. <laughs> well, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> One of the best movies I've seen so far is I Frankenstein. And I Frankenstein. You, that's almost like if you take a combination of these two stories, you've got zombies, their soulless bodies, to be possessed by demons. And that's pretty cool. When you that could be. I, I, I wish I thought that one up, but no, that's, that's it's interesting. Not, too late not me. To come no, up with something a great movie. Yeah. yeah, it's, we, it's fascinating. I think it's fascinating. So, like, guys, a story. how do you come up with the words to use and stuff? Like, yeah. I'm just curious as to how you would even like put a paragraph together. With with me, I'll I'll type it all out. Everything that's coming to me because. People think that the writer is the know-all, be-all, and I know everything about the English language. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. So my key, my, my main mission is to get the story out. That chapter, if I'm writing a chapter a day or a chapter in a week, I want to get the whole chapter out. Then when we revise or revisit what we're writing, that's when we make our editing. Mm -hmm. and when we, so it doesn't matter what you put down at first, as long as you put something down. Then you can mm -hmm. go over and make your corrections after. How about yourself? It's very similar. I, I, I used to call it vomit writing. I'd get up just because the story's inside me and it has yeah, to just like come out. I just I like that. And I'm just banging on the keyboards and, you know, punctuation, all that is just secondary at the point. Yeah. I'm just trying to get it out. Uh, and, and when you get into the zone, like I was telling you earlier with this book, I, it was almost like watching a movie and just writing down what was happening before my eyes. You know, it was like my mind's eye saw this actually being acted out, and I, and I typed it down, and, and it just came to me. I'll take it. Like so you, you kind of see what's happening and as you're and writing I, It's almost it, like just, I'm watching it on a big TV just, screen and just, oh, wow, that really happened? Wow. Yep. <laughs> and no, no you're, both your books, one started out, and now it's a spinoff, The Hollow. In the Hollow Trees, that's the spin off from the that's first second book, right? Book, right. Okay. Um, that's the sequel to Carved in Stone. The third book, Mr. Midnight, is uh, actually already written uh, mm -hmm. and awaiting editing, and, and the, it's the editor's job to make us look good. Uh, and I'm sure they were really hard. How do you at get it. the editor and all these people that help you? How do you find them? I was lucky. I, my editor, you know, I got my friend Adam Rebello is my editor, and uh, Coral Ferreira has been doing my editing. And they read the book, they read the story, you know, the material, they loved it, and they were like, oh, we're just gonna edit this. So I was lucky to have them do the editing for me. And, uh, and that's tweaking the grammar and the vocab yep, and all? Yep. Saying when to start a new chapter, do they do it? Like, I don't know, I've never written a book. But. I mean, Adam is good, but Coral is amazing. You talk about inspiration, I wanna visit that real quick. This book, you know, the, the zombie genre, post to pop, what inspired this is a song by the band Perry, If I Die Young. Nothing to do with zombies, but in my brain, I, just that it's song amazing. inspired this really story. Talented. How about you, Ken? My editor uh, is uh, Pamela Loring, PamelaLoring.net, uh, so she's available, uh, very busy. Um, and we had a little head-to-head -head on a few things, uh, disagreements, but that's how you edit. You know, she, no, this would never work. Don't ever do this in a book. You know, and then back and forth, back and forth to help me flesh up my ideas. And I'm actually working with a, a different editor, Rachel Fogg, on the uh, a book that I'm putting out now, which is a, a compilation of uh, short stories that I've been writing for magazines like uh, uh, Glimmer Train and, and, and Sixfold. So, um, what do you have to say for the future writers of America here? Or, like, just what, what words of wisdom do you have to um, well, I'm going to just quote Stephen Kane. Uh, Talent is as common as table salt. It's hard work that'll get you where you want to go. Uh -huh. Very nicely said. If somebody tells you you're not good at something, keep doing it, because that's when you get better at it. And don't give up. It starts up here. That's good. That's Confidence very good. And, right. That's awesome. Keep writing, guys. Keep really, writing. I'm impressed. Thank you so much thank for you coming for on, having. Tim. It's yeah. nice to see you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming really, on, too. Really thank you very so much. But well, we got another half coming up. Don't we leave have, yet. Don't leave. Viewers, don't leave. We'll be right back for a real surprise there, or really? maybe a spooky surprise. <laughs> I'm Mary Ellen Yo. Scary, scary, scary Ellen? Okay, scary no. Scary Ellen's coming up. <laughs> and I'm John McCall. Thanks for watching FYI. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Shell shock, psychoneuroses, battle fatigue, PTSD. So far as combat is concerned, I think the stress is going to be the same in any kind of a war. I think it takes strength to recognize that you need help. 
and to get the help. Ask your squad leader, platoon leader, platoon sergeant for help. You get shot up, you don't hesitate about going for treatment. A lot of times you can be wounded in your mind. There's nothing wrong by bringing that to other people's attention and asking for help. Hi, I'm Kelly O'Hara, here to support my good friend and consummate musician, Stephen Blyer, and the countless others who suffer from FSHD muscular dystrophy. FSHD, the most common form of muscular dystrophy, is a lifelong progressive loss of all skeletal muscles. I have FSHD and I hope we find a cure soon. Give with your whole heart so they can find a cure real soon. Mama. 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 Say mama. mama. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm almost two now. I'm still not responding. That's one sign of a communication disorder, and delaying treatment can affect my development. Many parents aren't aware of the early signs of speech, language, and hearing disorders, yet early detection and treatment can improve quality of life. Say dada. Ugh, here we go. Identify the signs of communication disorders. Hi, I'm Chris Burke, an actor who happens to have Down syndrome. Join me in watching some great stories about inspiring people with Down syndrome. My name is Annie. I'm a fan of Barlow. I'm Meg. I'm Red. I'm Serena. Jay Carroll. And this is my great story. Great story. My great story. This is my great story. You can watch at ndss.org slash stories. Welcome back to FYI. My name's John McCall, and you I are... I am Mary Ellen Yo, soon to be Scary Ellen. Ooh. We have Erica here, a renowned makeup artist, who's going to turn me into a ghoul. Uh oh Right? Mm, so okay. watch out, right? So while you're being ghoulish... You're going to be talking. And I'm going to be talking to Tim, and I'm going to talk to uh, Ken. So, Erica, how'd you get into makeup? Let's just introduce Erica quickly. How'd you get into doing this? Um, I am... I was actually originally a face painter and still am a face painter, so I do like little kids' birthday parties and things like that. Um, but I had a friend recommend me for a new haunted house that was opening, and um, I work at Ghoulie Manor uh, in Taunton, actually. And I had never done horror makeup before, ever, and it was like guerrilla warfare of makeup. <laughs> and they <laughs> threw me in there, and um, I've been with them for three years, so. Okay, great. All right, great. So okay. this is right in line with you guys, too. And we have more surprises, viewers, so please don't leave. We have more surprises to come, right, John? Okay, that's right. All right. Scary Ellen. So while we're talking still to Tim and Ken, Erica is going to do me and make me up and, like, create. Oh. I know. Just, <laughs> oh, just my goodness. Like, oh, think boy. I'm bad now. Wait till I, like, oh, get Oh, boy. Where are we going to trouble? Yeah, Mr. Right? Yo, you're going to be in trouble when Mrs. Yo gets home. I don't know. So let's go back to you, uh, Ken, if we can. If you could talk a little bit more about your book. Okay. Where you could pick up your book and... Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's available locally at Annie's Bookstore, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's also at uh, Read More Books mm -hmm. down on uh, Route 44. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can also get it at Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, or any other fine retailers uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So the first book was Carved in Stone. follow-up book was In Hollow Trees. And uh, these have been out now for, this one's been out for a few months, this one's been out for a little over a year. Okay, both of those books, what took you the longest to write those two books? Actually, I did three in a row, so the third book's already written as well. Really? Yeah, so as soon as I finished the first one, I, I just kept going with the story and began the second one, finished the second one and began the third one. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been putting them out one per year. Uh, and right now, uh, in between, I'm doing a few other projects. Uh, like I was talking to you earlier, I have a compilation of short stories coming out in the next several weeks. So that'll be available as well. Okay, thank you. Tim. Yes, The Refuge. The Refuge. It's available locally at Read More Books. Uh, sold out right now, which makes me feel kind of good. Another great, great. That's great. Coming Outstanding. In. Also available on Amazon. It can also be picked up on my website, timsouza.com. T-I-M-S-O-U-S-A dot com. You can also pick it up on eStore. Uh, eStore, I, I, I recommend Veterans, Public Safety. There's a discount code for you. Marines, there's a separate discount code for you. <laughs> She's laughing, sorry. I'm just watching Email the refuge for that discount code. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. Now, how long did that take you to write on the refuge? This took me about a year and a half to write. 
uh, this one here took about a year and a half or so to write. Uh, and then revise, and then the editing. While it was in revision and editing, I had the, uh, the second book, this three-book series. The second book is already written, and I started the, f the first chapter of the third book is done. So I'll be working that. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, to go back with both your books again, um, what kind of, in, in the book itself, I don't want to share too much because I want the people at home to really go to your place to get the books. What part of the book that you could probably say that it really kind of is an exciting part that you want people to really zero in mm -hmm. that will gear you to another book? If you follow what I'm saying, there's probably something in that book's going to say, wow, I didn't oh, catch that. She's going in I... my ear. T.O. is here. She's going in my ear, John. Uh oh. Oh, oh bro. Oh, oh. T.O. is coming to life. Uh oh, That's she's excellent. coming to life. Yeah, watch out. She's smiling way too much here right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is why she's she not really a makeup job. artist. She has a cool thing here, though. Can we zoom in on this for a minute here? Okay, Look yeah, let's talk about thing. that. Yeah. It's all different. She's got a palette here that I don't know what it is. I want the makeup, not my face. Can... There we go. Look at it. It's all different <laughs> colors that she's using. It's uh -huh. kind of cool. Yeah. A bruise wheel? Bruise wheel, bruise, yeah. It's like a black and blue bruise. Yep, you can use it to make bruises or zombies or Good whatever job, cuts. Um, and then I have water-based paint, too, that I'll be using in a minute. Oh, Joy, mm -hmm. I can't wait. But she's smiling a little <laughs> bit too much. But sorry to interrupt you. No, that's all right. It's all right. So, so there's going to be a part of the book that's going to say, wow, I didn't catch that from the first one. I'm going to have to kind of get myself ready for the next one. You follow what I'm saying? Oh, there's, there's clues about how the story begins. So yeah, if you read the first, first book, you read the second one, it stands alone. Okay. Uh, and I tried to write them that way, so if you incidentally picked up out of order, uh, you wouldn't be completely lost, but yet you would get more of the backstory, obviously, if you, if you did pick up the first book mm -hmm. uh, and started at the very beginning. Uh, all my books, uh, I kind of keep the paragraphs, uh, the chapters, excuse me, short. Uh, I jump right into the action. I like stuff to move at a quick pace. Um, I don't lollygag and go into over-explanation. I let your imagination fill in a lot. So I just keep it moving. And, uh, and then I leave a little cliffhanger at the end of every chapter to, to awesome. bring you back. So I'm hoping it's the writing style that I've chosen that mm -hmm. brings you back to get more books because I, I picked it up and I liked it. I just like it to move fast. I want you to stay interested and, and want to read and continue continue to read the book. And that's actually the, the biggest compliment I've been getting is, you know what, I read your book in two days. I couldn't put it down. I've heard that more than anything, and that's great. That just mm -hmm. makes me feel wonderful. Mm -hmm. How about yourself, Tim? A lot of the stuff in here would be some of the science things, some of the things that most people wouldn't have thought of. And mm -hmm. uh, just like Ken, you know, I've, this book has been described as a cliffhanger. It's gotten some great reviews, similar reviews on Amazon as being a cliffhanger, folks telling me they couldn't put it down. I've got people already asking me for the second book, but mm -hmm. that won't be released until Halloween of 2015. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's what a lot of the things, some people are going to want to read the book again and again. They'll, they'll, it's one of those they'll pick something up that they right. might have missed the first time. And a lot of it, I'm going to guess, would be some of the science, science fiction that mm -hmm. I threw in there. And uh, I'm not going to give too much of it away. You just got to read the book. You got to read the book. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's go zip back right to Mary Ellen. What's going on over here? Look at, she's got a new palette now, Erica. Oh. What's this that you're doing here now? Um, this Boy, is, that's a, nice. This is a Ben Nye Media Pro palette. Uh, yeah, cool. yeah look at all those right. colors. Those are fascinating, huh? Thank bright, you. nice, bright colors. I like There's it. There's a few bright She's ones. darkening me, John. Yes. So we're going to... What an improvement, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, John, i got to say, this is why she she is the best. This is why she's the my lead makeup artist. <laughs> this is why she runs mm -hmm. my zombies, you know? Mm -hmm. She does zombies for you? What oh, do you yeah. What about that, yeah. Tim? Could you elaborate? What's that? There are zombies. And for... Characters? For book illustrations, right? Yeah, book, yeah. And, the illustration and viewers, photo we do have something that's coming up, right? And yeah. So <laughs> stay tuned. Yeah, now, you have an artist too, that. Ken, right? Uh, yes. The uh, artist did my second book and who's also going to do the covers of mm -hmm. uh, the next couple books is uh, a local guy named Ray. Hello, Ray. Uh, Ray Therian. Um, he is uh, a Taunton resident and uh, owns his own um, company called Fine Design Creative. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he is a fabulous artist. And he actually did this cover in Hollow Trees. Very, very nice. So he does great work, and he's going to do a couple more covers for me. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a book that I wrote for my daughter 
for Christmas because I wanted to give her something personal oh, and it's not that. in the horror genre at all. It actually has to do with lions and tigers. It's one of her favorite things. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm actually going to put it out and it's going to be illustrated too. Hey, I might like that book. I love big cats. <laughs> My daughter absolutely adores them. So she, we play in, uh, I get the stories from when we play and she makes mm -hmm. them up as she goes. And I actually write this stuff down. I'm like, it, it's amazing. It's how similar to like you were talking to. about earlier. You mentioned that when you were growing up, you used to do comic books and you used to act out the superheroes and all that. It seems like your thought is in that kind of direction, I too. I think most kids do. I right. mean, how many of us put a towel or, or a small blanket around our neck pretending we were Superman, you know? In all and, those days. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, well, I, some of us still kind of do. Enjoy superheroes and the in, in that kind of fantasy literature. Uh, actually, I do as an adult collect comic books still. Mm -hmm. I just like that. So I like all kinds of genres. Right. Let, let's go check out Mary Ellen again. See how scary she's starting to look. Uh oh, look at her now. Look at that. Wow. Think I'll get lucky tonight, John? Uh, yeah, I think so. We have a couple of things coming up here, right? I hope you don't get pulled over. Yeah, I, I know. know. I'll, I'll say, good. I'll give him your card, Erica. I'll say, yeah. Wow, that's pretty interesting. So talk a little bit, Erica, if you can, just a little bit about what you're putting together here. Oh, um, well, with zombie makeup or horror makeup what right. you want to do is like pretty much the exact opposite of beauty makeup mm -hmm. so you want to accentuate all of the flaws i'm sorry not that you have many that's a <laughs> you should be a politician <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so you um accentuate all the wrinkles and all the um imperfections in the skin mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to give it a different color anything to dehumanize um, the face is what makes yeah, it Yeah, that's very hard though for her. She looks absolutely beautiful all the time, so it's going to be very hard it to zombify you. It is very hard. Pay me 10 bucks later. Yeah. So anyways. <laughs> so I'll have to feed them. You know that. That's the gig, right, Tim? You know. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I might want to make her an illustration on my second book. Erica is doing an awesome job as usual here. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's very gentle That's too. That's interesting. And I noticed there's no odor. It's not like it doesn't feel heavy, greasy. No. It's not. Yeah, I, I don't use the same products that you would buy at like um, a Halloween store or something like that. All my all my products are professional grade, yeah, cosmetic, can, yeah. FDA approved, and I sanitize them. And I'm very um, very professional. Yes, you, you are. are very professional, very, very nicely nice. done. Very nice. Yeah, you are. Thank you. You are. Oh, thanks, guys. Oh, now I'm blushing. Now she's blushing. <laughs> Ill. I'm going to get you later. So <laughs> awesome. We're going to do a little role reversal, John. It looks great. looks great. Okay, we'll come back to you in a few minutes scary to see how Ellen. scary Ellen's okay. going to look. Scary like. Ellen. <laughs> That's funny, huh? Um, Ken, if you can, people at home are probably really getting into this uh, talk tonight, and, and they w someone might want to be a future author. What would you like to say to someone that what they have to do to write. get into uh, write and write and then write some more and then when you think you're done writing write, keep writing right. and then refresh look at your stuff edit yourself take some writing courses uh, he was talking earlier you don't have to be an English major to write a book uh, right. it does help to know your craft so definitely learn about it it is something that gets refined over time mm -hmm. uh, your writing should improve and, and will. Uh, it's like a muscle. You exercise it, it gets stronger. So um, definitely take classes, definitely refine your art. It's, you know, just like anything, learning a guitar. You aren't very good the first couple weeks you pick one up, but after a couple of years, you are got a hang of it. So that, yeah. same idea. Um, Where but, would you take classes, if I could interject? Sure. Uh, local colleges. Um, I think BCC might have something. Just creative writing? Creative like writing, that? absolutely, yes. Um, and you can look those up online. I'm sure there's a, a long list of them that uh, are available if, at a reasonable rate locally. Um, Ooh, that tickles. Oh, she's tickling me, John. <laughs> tickling me. <laughs> the only, I got to say, when it comes to classes, the only creative writing classes I ever took was when I went to Northeastern. There was just three of them. My major was criminal justice. Nothing to do with writing a book. You don't have to be an English major. If you don't take any classes, classes are not going to replace what you have in here. So if you really want to do it, do it. If you mess up, you've got some friends who look it over for you, and they'll teach you. They'll show you a little bit of this or a little bit of that. And before you know it, you're writing like a champ. Mm -hmm. So you feel the same way too, just Jeff. write. 
Like yeah, just keep writing, more, writing, and, writing. Uh, and and working when you're with an editor helps a lot too. Um, mm -hmm. There are services too that if, if you don't want to take classes, uh, editing services online that you can submit your work to and they'll edit it for you for, for a fee. Uh, and give you ideas. People who've worked in the publishing industry um, that can tell you what will work, what won't work. Um, now, would you always write about demons? No, um, actually, we were talking about this earlier because uh, I, uh, I like all kinds of genres. This is just my favorite. I think uh, that kind of thing is, is uh, the scary stuff is the most fun. Yeah. But people can be the demons too. They can be the bad guys too. So some of my stories that'll be coming out are about uh, conspiracy theorists or uh, bullies and that kind of thing. And then there was that uh, other book I was talking about that I'm going to be releasing about um, just tigers and lions mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff too. How about yourself, Tim? I mean, I'll agree with him. Some of the biggest demons on this planet are people. I did law enforcement for 10 years. I can back that up 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's very interesting. Can you incorporate them into your stories? Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Some of the ideas of there's bad people out there. Yeah. And sometimes you read the newspaper, that's probably scarier than what we wrote. Oh, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Let's go back check out. They're looking great. Again. How's she looking? Looking good. Oh boy. Oh. This is uh, what. See? Wow. Oh. That's unbelievable. <laughs> that really is. It is right. Look at her. Oh. Oh, I look. This That's one, good. I'm gonna look like dead. Almost huh? like an alien. <laughs> I know. It's kind of weird. Not, like not just come... dead, but when you're dead and you reanimate. And I come back into your book here, right? Book is two. That... Yes. Wow. I'm gonna take a, a couple <laughs> pictures oh, of you. Right, Very good. Oh. Fabulous. Oh. Uh, oh. Mr. Yo. Good oh, job. Next, Good job, Erica. Look at <laughs> now she's into something else here. This is my water based paint. Um, okay. All right, so close your eyes and close your mouth. Mmm. It's tricks of the trade here. Mmm. She's flicking it. Mm hmm. Wow. So this oh, that would be the, blood. That's, that's, that's got to make blood. it a little yeah. bloody. Yeah. Interesting. Mmm. And you're pretty much done for like. For now, I'm pretty. Look at it. Look at wow. the bags under my eyes. Beautiful. Look at it. I look like I'm bruised. Like that, that makeup that you use is bruised makeup. Look at viewers. Ooh, la la. Pretty <laughs> It's pretty cool, though, isn't it? Oh, right? look at that. Oh, look at it. Did I hurt it? black in my teeth. Yes. My um, teeth are. That's Does it feel heavy on your face at all? No, feel it. It's just like nothing. Wow. It's dry. Yeah. It dries almost immediately. Did yeah. you want to, what, you're ready to punch me. He wants to punch out a tooth or something. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Very you look too good. You're She'd looking... kill me if I did that. That's no, her artwork. No, yeah, I'd, I'd kill you if you did that. <laughs> Erica would kill would... me. But yeah, it was kind of easy. It's not like you think that it's not cakey or crunchy or cracky. It's, no, like I said, it's, it's not that stuff that you buy at the Halloween store. That stuff is really meant for one night, whereas my stuff is... No. What? I can't go to work like this tomorrow. Well, I, I could. Sure you could. I think that would be so pretty the interesting. Some that I cheat. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Courtesy of the refuge. I know. Sure you there you go. There you go. But yeah, it feels like it's like soft. It's, it's, it's not what I thought it would be. Good. Interesting. Um, interesting. Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? And so, given more time, you can do even more with... Um, well, I couldn't do this. I'm not that talented. That's oh. just, oh. But if I get my bruise palette... And get my other, um, what was the, yeah, my bruise palette viewers. They're, Let's show. They're actually both by Ben Nye. But now let me show you, um, her palette is right here. Yes. Like, yeah, I noticed that she was painted. Oh. That's where I Like an artist has well, a palette. That was Erica's palette. Exactly. I noticed yeah, that. Yeah, they make fun of me at the Haunted House because Cause your they, give, there? they give me things, like towels and, and other things to wipe my brush on, it still ends up on my arm. I know, I still well, have We're come. actually going to take a commercial break. Okay. And we have another surprise coming on. Good job. So Come people, on. please, stay tuned and wait to see Scary Ellen. Thank you, Erica, so much. <laughs> nice job. So remember, nice Erica, job. Stuff, and thank we'll you, pump you, you up some okay, more. Okay, we'll, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. I'm John McCall. And I'm Scary, Scary Ellen. Talking to veterans about the real issues they're dealing with can be awkward and uncomfortable. We think to ourselves, I never served. How could I understand? They'll talk about it when they're ready. And then we wonder why they don't want to talk. But when their behavior changes, when they withdraw to themselves, increase substance use, or even talk about hurting themselves, it's time to act. Because if we don't, 
our families and relationships will suffer. Ask the hard questions. Listen to the veterans in your life and show you care. Make the call. It matters. When you recognize a veteran is in crisis, call the Veterans Crisis Line at 1-800-273-8255 and press 1. I tell people I have three kids, one of them's adopted, I just don't know which one. I can't imagine having to be in a birth mother's position to make that choice. You know, I was kind of just asking her, you know, what is your motivation, why are you doing this? And she looked at me and she said, because you can give my son a life that, that I could not. We always tell her thank you. He is such a blessing to us. Every day is just a ray of sunshine from him. So. We're Chanda and Brian, and we chose adoption. What can just one dollar buy? A dollar can go a long way, so imagine what ten could do. Item donations distract the relief effort and can cost more to ship than what they are actually worth. So stop sending canned goods and start sending cash, because just one dollar can make all the difference. Oh, viewers, help me, please. We have Zara in the audience. Viewers, we are back with the best makeup artist around town. Erica, thank you so much. So why are we doing this? Well, I think we've been inundated with some zombies around here. And we have zombies. Oh, boy. We have zombies joining Scary Ellen and John. And Erica did a fantastic <laughs> job. So we have some questions for them. So this will be interesting, I do believe. Uh -huh. So let's say, how long did it take? Oh, he's not looking at me look like at in a him. nice way. I don't like this at all. Erica. No, 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 you're lunch. Oh, I'm lunch. I don't want to be lunch. Like, oh, look at my <laughs> How enough. long did it take you to do his face, his makeup? How long would that whole process take? That took about 45 minutes to an hour. And he's not just his face. But it's a whole ensemble. It's a, he, down to his toes. It's a whole what's, ensemble. What's your, what, what's your name? How long have you been a oh. zombie? <laughs> what's going on here, John? Oh. He you said know? to say his name is Chris. Oh. Chris. Chris. Okay. Chris How old are you, Chris? <laughs> he said to say he's in his twenties. Twenties. Oh. How long has he been a zombie? How can <laughs> you a couple years now. A couple of years. That's uh, all. It's a lot of feeding. Good. How do you become a zombie? Well, you gotta get infected. infected. Either you were either you were infected, either you were exposed to the antigen, or you were attacked by a zombie and became infected. So the wait, I think I'm getting this now. These are characters from your book. Oh, they're the not characters. They're zombies. They were. They're they're zombies. Oh, they're not zombies. Yeah, but look. look, look who oh says? gosh, wait, wait, who's this one? She thought I don't like no, her. Well, what she wanted me to tell you that you smell really good. She knows you're alive. The makeup's not fooling her. Oh, oh, so she might want to have lunch again. She's I'm hungry. Like, yeah, I could tell. Yeah. Am I am I a cute zombie? Is he cute? She wanted oh, me to say no. <laughs> <laughs> How long has she been dead? So zombies are dead, right? The zombies yeah. are dead? Reanimated. Re Reanimated. Reanimated dead, yeah. So how long has she been like this here? Yeah. She says a year and a half. And what, what's that thing there? Yeah, what happened like, here? Well, can we she catch was... her? Ah! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah, she was... She, okay, so she was on her way home for a lunch break. The husband already reanimated and attacked her. Oh, her husband wow. did that too? Yeah, because he, he's, he's, he's reanimated too. No, no, so who, who, who's they're, that behind they're you? They're divorced now. Oh, they're divorced who, now. Who's this behind you? Who's this one? Oh, oh this is zombie. We, we, we kind of named him Sid. That's Sid? Yeah. But look how Sid. he's looking. He's smiling at me. What's going on? Sid's got, I like, funny lips. Why? Did he's he just newly reanimated. Mm -hmm. Look at John. He wants you. No, I'm thinking How long has you? Sid been dead or a zombie mm. or what? Reanimated. Re oh, he reanimated us a few months oh, ago. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zombies, if you're hungry, Mary Ellen Yeo here makes a good meal. Go, go get her. What are those, what, like these, these bad black... Bad zombies. Bad. Bad zombies. Don't that's eat the like, host. What are these black things all over that? Like, those are just, like, what? What happened to them? Decay skin. De oh. 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 Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, when you're dead, <laughs> you kind of fall apart. 
But when you eat, don't you eat people? Is that the only thing you guys eat? What do, what do you eat? Ah. Oh, Jesus <laughs> They said to say they to eat anything that's living, anything with a pulse. It could be a, another human being. It could be a chipmunk. Could be my dog. It could be your dog. Bye-bye, item. Or, oh my gosh, or it could that be is scary terrible. Ellen. It could be scary Ellen. No, ah. look, at me. look at me. Look at this face. I'm one of them. Don't. So why do they eat bodies? Why can't they just go to Mickey D's or something? Well, like because that? zombies don't have wallets. Oh, they don't have wallets. They eat to so feed the organism that's taken over their body. Well, let me ask you a oh, question. Now, a I'm going to ask only Kenny living a question flesh. here. Since you have demons. Kenny. Are they similar to my, my, my friends here? Well, I didn't bring any with me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thankfully. <Next time. laughs> uh, no, I think they're, they're vastly different. Uh, they come direct from the underworld. Uh, they don't bother in living inside a, a corporal body. Mm -hmm. So, so okay. do these guys have these reanimate, reanimated zombies, I guess? Do they have families and kids, or do they eat them well, too? Do you have any kids? He ate one, infected the others. So he eats one, and inf <laughs> but when you infect someone, you, the infected becomes another zombie? Yeah, and if they don't eat them fully. Yeah. See, oh. kids are little. Oh, so, oh, are little. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't, you can eat the whole kid at yeah, once? Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you share meals? <laughs> do, do zombies share? Sometimes. Like animals when, will when, share, like... It, now, these ones here travel in hordes. So when they travel in hordes, they'll attack in hordes. And when they attack in hordes, it doesn't matter what it is. So it's you got take a pulse. the leg, you take the it, uh, arm, you take whatever. Not so much as that <laughs> detail, they're organized, but they will go. go. Feast feast. Do they sleep? Do they sleep? Do you guys no. sleep? She tastes pretty good, huh? Zombies don't sleep. So, mm -hmm. Never they don't sleep? need it. Tim, she, oh, she agrees with me. They don't sleep. I was trying to understand the language. She says, Mary Ellen's arm tastes very, Does very it? good. Take a so bite. So you just don't even Take have her. to rest or anything? They're just always walking around looking for... The organism that took over their body is continuously replacing itself, almost like a century system, if you will. When okay. one is relieved, the other takes over so they can keep on going for 24 hours. Almost like a human being. 25, something like 25,000 cells in your body die out and are replaced at... By the time we're done with a simple two se uh, five second conversation, same principle with these guys. Yeah. So they're going to be around for, and they just multiply almost exponentially, then, right? Mm -hmm. If they so bite you. If they bite. Know. Well, why wouldn't so they? So if you why, get bitten. Well, they just want to eat me, you mean? Unless, they just get hungry. So un they get hungry. Unless you're an O positive blood type. For some um, reason, they don't attack that. Um, yeah, but you know what's interesting? Just before the show, I was bitten and, and look oh, I'm what sorry, happened. they do look, attack that they look what happened to me too. Will transform. Sorry? Look what happened to me. I got bitten right before the next time we came back from the show. You quick, know, I, quick like a bunny. So really? I don't know what happened. I, 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 mean, I, we're gonna look don't like look this. at me I like that, John. I'm what are you <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask. Where were like where were they when the apocalypse you talked about an apocalypse, so yeah. where were they when the apocalypse hit? He was on his way to the gym. <laughs> he was in the bathroom. Hey, where were you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where was she? I didn't hear her. And she was just, just coming home for a break, taking a break. Really? And then her husband attacked her. Mm. So everybody here got attacked by a zombie. And that's, yeah. Otherwise, they would have been mm -hmm. lunch or supper or something. Now, do you know when they're coming after you? I mean, we can see these guys. Well, like, it's like, let's say you were walking out to your car and you got these guys coming up on you. It's safe to assume they're not friendlies. No, so, they don't look very friendly. Oh, so you they know. Want to give me a <laughs> then you know. Can, they, can I outrun them? Yeah, you can. You can outrun them. You can outrun the aquatomorphs, which is the water creature I, that you'll find in this book, but you will not outrun the knock. The only advantage of the knock, that you'll have over the knock is the knock only comes out at night. Let They're intelligent. You, no. Can anybody outrun a demon? I don't think so. No. No, the demon's gonna go. So he just goes out. wherever you are. So the demon goes right where wherever you are. It follows right. you right to that spot. Can it, can demons go into uh, zombies? Are they saying? I guess there might not be much in there for them, but <laughs> have you ever seen the movie I Frankenstein? Great movie. No, I no. Well, watch what happens with zombies in that movie, or what was supposed to happen with zombies. Goes along with to. what you were asking. Yeah. Great movie. 
Hmm. So do they work? Yeah. Do you guys work? Besides killing people? <laughs> they kill animals too. Yeah. And what do you do for work? Chris is in marketing. What did you say? Marketing, Tim? marketing Tim? for zombies. Is that your funny? <laughs> Tim, what did she? Say? I just asked what she did for a living. She just. Can you what say that again? Say? Oh, she's a lawyer. She was lawyer. a lawyer. It was a lawyer. Well, that's she's a zombie now. Yeah, not much of a difference. What, what about the guy? What, what about what the gentleman Sid? behind you? What's Sid? Construction. 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 Oh, okay. And what were you? His mom's basement. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Marketing. Was, Marketing. When he did mark, when he was alive, yeah. He was, hmm. So do they know that they're like zombies and not people anymore? They know. They know? They, you know that you're a zombie? Do you know you're a zombie? <laughs> 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 so they know. It, but they like food. You said they like food, so I would think that they would just drink blood, but that's not No, the those are the Nox. But the Nox also, yeah. The Nox just drink the blood? The Nox will, will swallow your blood hole, yeah. And they're quick, too. They're like, your body, almost like, you ever see one of those bags that just, they suck the air out of them that fast, and they, like. Like a Capri Sun when my son drinks it. That's what happens oh, to, that's yeah. Oh, that's an awesome huh? description, and yeah. And that's what the that's Nox what is. happens to the human body when a Nox swallows. So that's, a Nox will just drink the blood like a vampire. Fast. It's a fast, fast kill, yeah. Zombies can eat, eat your you flesh. Up, eat my yeah. flesh and spit out the bones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about my heart and liver and kidneys? Oh, they'll eat that too. Mm. The only thing oh, they don't eat is the bone because they can't chew it. Now, what does demons do? Totally hungry. What does demons do? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you Whatever they, so they want. They what? possess you and make you do things for them. Oh, so now I understand the concept here. Yeah, I think I have one of those. You're Quite possibly. <laughs> Quite possibly. Yes. <laughs> Go see a priest or something. Yeah, go get us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So now, how do you get rid of zombies? You don't. What? You can't. There's a way of killing them, like these guys here. How would you kill them? Well, you got to read the book. Oh, oh there's a hook. Yeah, there's a hook. What about demons? How, how do you kill demons? Same, same way. Gotta you have to the read the book. book. You got to read the book. <laughs> So does good triumph, maybe, John? I don't know. I, don't I think know. it does. But if these zombies keep eating people and stuff, they would just keep multiplying exponentially. I will say yes, in the third book, can. help comes. You won't believe where the help comes. The Marines. Comes. No. Oh, no. Not just the read Marines. the book. Let me tell you, a, a proud Marine, love. You know, I'm telling you, Marines in the apostle and in, in the apocalypse. There's no more military. There's no more police. There's it's no more the organization. There's nothing but zombies. Gone. And yeah. There's people fighting for their lives, and then there's these guys looking to fight, eat. looking to eat the people. So, okay, what about just talk with the demons now? How can you get rid of the demons? Are they hard to get rid of? Uh, well, again, it just would ruin the end of the book, now, wouldn't it? That's right. It would. So, I, so we they have can, to read. Let's put, I'll just say that they can be eliminated if if. If you do what you have to do. And if you read the book, it'll yes. tell you how, right? Yes. Gotta These read the guys book. look pretty wow. ghoulish here, I must say. They look kind of scary. Handsome. like that. <laughs> they are handsome. I can't. Watch out, Ken. They're going to come after you. So do guys, do guys only go after guys? Would they like Ken, too? Would they They're just like eat everybody. him? Or would they like Anything yeah. with a pulse. They don't care? And they and don't care about a bird? And what go good with me? Would... White wine or? Oh, do they drink? <laughs> do they drink? Garlic bread? Do they drink? <laughs> do they drink? She's kind of creepy, this one here, huh? She's yeah, kind of creepy. Look at that, huh? She's, she's great. She is great, huh? Mm -hmm. She doing it. I don't like that black marks all over. She has all those, like, burns. It looks like see, see, She just said that she doesn't know what to make of you. You look like one of them, but, but you don't, don't smell, smell like, like one, one of them. And that's how the zombies know people are alive? The scent. The scent of the, the iron scent. in your blood. They oh, pick up on it. Oh, that's what it is. Sweet. Yeah. I'm totally safe. Look I'm at Tim. Anemic. Timmy, that's into oh. the scent of your blood. Mm. That's how they would smell me? You like that, huh? You, you like Just that a little way. twist of the hand, <laughs> the scent of your blood. It's kind of scary, isn't it here, John? What do you think about all this? Well, we're dressed like them, but I don't know if we really are so like them. So they don't age. Zombies, can you smell iron and blood right now? Yeah. Look at these <laughs> Can you zoom in by any chance, like zoom in on their faces here? Because it's quite remarkable. Well, you guys are wow. good too. I mean, Erica. Yeah, Erica. There this is, is why she's the look best. At, look, look, look at the look camera. At Can you look at the camera? Erica, this is look why I'm Go to Sid. Like, turn there he goes. Zombie, say good zombie. Uh -huh. Look at Sid. Like, look at his lips. It's like a blood all over his like. Look at Sid's got skin. blood in his mouth. Look at him. His cheeks are flopping. I think he's hungry, huh? And let's see Miss Ann over here. Look at her. Like John. Like, look at. Look at all those. 
Huh? Now let's like, look, let's look at us. No, like, ah! <laughs> yeah. like, no, I think that uh, I think they're bad here. I don't like them. They won't like me either, though. Tell them oh, that I don't. You. Tell them that they won't. They like, like me. you a lot. No, I mm -hmm. I had vinegar today. They won't like it. Mm -hmm. But it is pretty cool. I do like the makeup here, and I'm, I am in my. You know, look that way. Push him over that way. Like, see how, like, look at that. See that? Wow. It is pretty cool. And now, come here. Come here, good boy. Come here. And now, look at his flesh. <laughs> oh, Jesus! His flesh is he's sticking yeah. up right here. Oh, he's hungry. See look, he's it? drooling yeah, on I you. Yeah, I know. He's drooling. And Sid just had something fresh to eat, didn't he? Look at, look, look at, at it. Look at, look Can it. you <laughs> zoom in on Sid? He look killed a chipmunk on the way in. I tried to stop him, oh, but. Oh, did he? Look at this, Ken. You're next here, you know. Sure. So, Absolutely. Ken, look at. Oh, Sid's coming after. Sid. Yeah, he 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 did eat that chipmunk, but it wasn't very filling. Oh, so look, look at look, look at look at look at. Isn't that excellent? Oh my goodness. Oh. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. I know. Huh? Look at it. It's yeah. excellent. So he's newly, newly a new, a new, he's only a, yeah, a baby. He's a, he's a, a fresh baby reanimation. Song. So. His skin hasn't had a chance to rot yet. Oh, how long does no. that take, do you think? It just, it's, it's a continuous decaying process. So eventually they decay into nothing, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, so now they will be frozen. That, that's a good question that Ken just asked. Eventually they decay into nothing, is that true? Eventually, but if they, once, Over time. the thing is with, your, with the skeletal remains, depending on how well they've taken care of themselves before they became the mm. dead, if their skeletons walk, they, See a skeleton walking around too, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's when you there's nothing, no more to decay. Yeah. How can the skeletons walk around? The nervous system, the brain, spine, that's still going. No, what it's about all, oh. what's her name again? Pat. Pat. Ann, I mean. Anne. Ann. Ann. Ooh, I know. Ooh. Let's zoom in on Ann. Oh, look, look at. at Ann. Ooh. Look at. Isn't it awesome? Can you see her? Yeah, she looks pretty scary, huh? Oh. Yeah, I like all your black marks. And, the, and why does she have black marks? Why do you have black marks? The skin. So she's rotting away? That's because bugs got to her skin and they began feeding on her. Ooh. And the, zombie, the, the zombies, they're roaming around, they're rotten flesh, but birds of prey for some reason will land on them, start picking away at them, eating them, as well as other insects. And uh, What happens to the insects? Do they become... Yeah, what happens when the bugs There she is. Something? Now she can look oh, right at Oh, look at look smile, right sunshine. See. There smile, she is. Smile, sunshine. Look at right there. Wow. Look at Awesome. I love the dew. Who does your hair, too, right there? Yeah, that right there on her, the black marks on her, I, I would venture to guess is a bird. A bird, a bird of prey a of some sort must have landed on her and began feeding. And she's one of your lovely characters, too, here, right? She's too? awesome. She's awesome. She's a good zombie. Um, so were there good zombies and bad zombies? No, they're all going to eat you. They're all, they're all going to get But I just, I'm sick and twisted like this. Yeah, you are sick no, and twisted. I, I, my makeup, I'll look at the <coughs> camera, if you could tell a little bit about why you set it up this way. But you look great, John. Do I look great? Right? You've like never looked better it. in all the years I've known you. <laughs> hey, look. <laughs> yes. That's not a bad thing. He's not thing. being very nice, is he? I don't think anyone's going to. He's not a nice These zombies are going to work with me. They're going to against you. Right. Look at John. Look at, there you are. Look at. Okay. Look at John. Looks beat up. Doesn't he look beat up? How about yourself? I look don't at look you. Nasty. Yeah, look, look at you. Yeah. Look at what you look at. Look at yourself. I just like, look at yourself. Wow. All right. So what questions do we have here? Do they want to tell us anything, Tim? Uh, the zombies. Zombies, what would you like to say? <sighs> They have lots to say. Yeah, they say they're hungry. <laughs> they're hungry. Right. Yeah. So oh, we better John. end the show with Charlie. We have a couple of minutes left. They're, they're torn between you guys and the deer they saw hopping across oh, the, across Ingle Street a little right. while ago. Well, before we close the program, do you have any closing remarks, dear Ken? No, I just want to say thank you for having me on. It was great, good fun. Everybody was great. And um, I really appreciate uh, your efforts and your time. Okay. Thank, thank you so for much. coming on. Good luck on. to you, really. Thank you, you so you. much. Keep writing. You're, you're, pleasure meeting you. Yeah. So you're we'll a be hero talking afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Tim, any closing remarks? Thank, thank you. you so well, much. I was, no. Sure. I mean, Did anybody you? who's interested in the refuge, you know, you can get it. You can check it out on my website, www.timsouza.com. You can log on to Amazon. It'll be available at all bookstores. Everywhere books are sold in a few weeks and on Kindle. Read more books. Selling it right now. Um, they're sold out. Uh, give us another couple of days. And they'll and, restock um, it, but put on it. And you want to hold up your books too? Absolutely. Also, read more. Annie's bookstore. Oh. I get both. 
Okay, you got both of them? And also a, at Amazon and other fine stores as well. Okay. Thank and of course, Sid, I shouldn't really extend my hand that way. Sid. Do you guys have anything to say you. before we end the show? Chris, thank you. She does look and delicious. Thank let's, you. Ah, let's have, a, have a bite. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> my name is Scary Ellen. This is John McCall. We'll see you, I hope, in the future. <laughs> <laughs>